Hey guys, one clue here. I hope all of you are doing well and having a really great day. In today's video, I want to talk about the recent update for the BitAX open source Bitcoin miner. And I want to explain you what are all the changes that are currently happening and what we can do now with the BitAX. So let's get started and right away right into it. So the first thing that I need to say about it is to check out the GitHub repository from Scott and check out his repository ESP-Miner. This one is the firmware or the software that you need to upload on your ESP32 that is sorted onto the BitX board. And we recently got a couple of updates so that we can now see all our settings and all our hash rate and stuff like this in the web browser. And I want to show you how this actually functions. Before we can actually proceed with this, because in my last video I explained to you on how to install this using the um, program VS Code. Um, we will also use this in today's video, but we need to change a couple of things. So the first thing that you need to do is to go to the ESP IDF download website and I will put the link in the video description down below so th that you can get this you will need to update your ESP IDF program to the latest version, to the version number 5.1.1. This one is needed due to that the code has been reworked in, on a couple of files and you need to have the latest ESP IDF to be able to install this on your BitAX hash board. Then we can go into our ESP miner repository and download all the necessary things that you need to do. So as you can see, I have already done so and I also already uploaded the firmware to the BitAX miner and I will not cover the parts of the installation and stuff like this in this video due to the fact that I have already done this in the last video. If you don't know how to do this, check out the last video about the BitAX miner. I will put a info card in the top right corner of this video so that you can click on this before you proceed with doing what we're doing now. So we have installed and we have flashed the ESP32 and the newest software is on it. You also need to be sure that you changed or reinstalled your ESP IDF extension in VS Code so that you can proceed with doing so. Then the process of configuring your VS Code folder is basically the same. You can go into view into the common palette and uh, use the device configuration, set the target, uh, set the device port and maybe change the flash board rate. But basically everything should be the same. The only thing that you need to be aware of is the serial port that you're using. And as in my last video, I am using this USB to serial bridge with a couple of cables. Um, I will probably show a picture how I've done this in one of my last videos. And you need, you need such a device or you need the ESP programmer. Both ways work. Um, the only difference then is how you configure your ESP IDF target on VS Code. But that's that's pretty simple and should be self-explanatory because if you change the device target, every step will be asked and you will read what the changes are that you're trying to accomplish on this configuration. Uh, let's go back into what we're currently doing. So we have flashed the newest firmware to our BitX. And to be sure, you don't need to do this. It's just a little bit more handy and you can see a couple of more stats and settings and stuff like this from your ESP miner or from your BitX miner. So I flashed it and I have put in the power. What has happened now is basically everything has been removed from it. So all my settings that I have set previously are no longer in there. And if you have any issues with installing the firmware, uh, read through the documentation of this GitHub repository because everything is explained in here. Especially there is a web server that's now running on the ESP32. You might need to change into the repository using the CD command or basically when you're in VS Code, open a terminal and CD into the slash main slash HTTP underscore server slash XOS and uh, you need to install all the dependencies. This is probably the only error that I can find that you will receive if you're trying to install this without installing all the dependencies for your VS Code. 
just run those two commands, npm space i, and after that you can use npm run build. And then you should be able to upload everything using the same command as in the last video, idf.py-p for the port, and then you put in com, in my example it was 10 or 9, and then flash. You can use the monitor, but if you don't want to use it, you don't want to monitor what's going on, no worries, you can just leave the monitor, but it's nice to have if you have a secret connection. So what we have then is, if you fire up the BitAX miner, you will see it will try to connect to a Wi-Fi, but everything has been erased from your ESP32, so there is no saved network on it, hopefully. It will try to connect three times to a network that does not exist, with a password that does not exist, and after that it will actually create its own Wi-Fi. So you need to go into your Wi-Fi settings and connect to a Wi-Fi called BitAX. After that, you can go into your web browser and open a page with, uh, with the number 192.168.4.1. This will actually open this overview. What we can see here is what kind of model I am running. I'm running the BM1397 chip. This is the ASIC chip that is actually producing the hash rate for mining Bitcoin. And we also see that we have some pre-settings in here. I'm not sure if this is my preset I'm, I'm not really sure or if this is another preset. I do not remember my own Bitcoin address, but nevertheless, for the sake of education here, I will just leave it as it is. So we will have some real-time logs and we have a couple of informations. We also have a restart button on this. So in the first experience, it's a great overview. It's called XOS and the creator of the public pool that we want to connect in just a second has created this web server that is running on the BitAX ESP32. So I definitely recommend you to mine to this public pool. This is a solo mining pool and it has a couple of great features. Uh, let me quickly open this and do a little bit of advertisement for this pool because there are two great things about this. The first thing, it's a solo pool. And the second thing is if you have under 50 terahash per miner, you will be charged with no fees. If you have above 50 terahash per miner, you will be charged a 1.5% fee, and a portion of this will go into the BitAx um, yeah, open source Bitcoin mining project. And as you can see, we get a great overview of the pool. I will put down all the links to every page that I'm opening in here in the video description, so you don't miss out on anything here. And keep in mind, all that we are doing here is basically gambling. Bitcoin solo mining is gambling because there will probably, there is a high probability that we will never find a block, but there's also the probability that we will find a block. This is also true for the nerd miner. If you're not familiar with this, also check out this project. It's really a nice project. It's mining Bitcoin with an ESP32, a little tiny device. It's basically pulling zero watts from the wall, close to zero, and is it is producing a couple of hashes. I don't want to go into detail about this. So let's go back into the eggs OS. So what can we do here? So the first thing that we can do is we can click on edit. And in here you will see that you can actually change your username or basically your Bitcoin wallet address. You can also change your Wi-Fi and your Wi-Fi password. So I will quickly do this. I will put in my Wi-Fi credentials and I will click on save and now it should connect in a second to my Wi-Fi so I need to open a new tab and check out my Wi-Fi connections and in here I should see in the next couple of seconds a new thing that is coming online to this let's see if this is doing anything can I still connect to it I still can connect to it uh, maybe I need to restart. I'm not sure. Wi-Fi status failed to connect. So I'll click on restart. Let's see what it will do. Maybe it will not automatically change to the Wi-Fi that we have set. So we just click on restart. Maybe this will help. So this should be some live processing of what is the experience with this. Because this is the first time for me to actually use this device. And I can see it's not online. Okay. Let me see if we get a new device in here. I see a new device in here. So let me grab the IP address. Yep. So now the BitX is connected to my local Wi-Fi. And as we can see, we get some real-time live logs. 
it is producing some nonsense so it is actually going ahead and producing some hashes and we can actually see our hash rate in real time on this web server so this esp32 is giving us a great web server that we can use to monitor our device and that we can actually monitor what's going on the logs are produced and we can read what is going on so this is absolutely amazing if you do not do not have updated to the recent version of the esp miner for your bit x miner i highly recommend you to do so and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you guys for watching if you like this video give me a thumb up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on further videos see you on the next one